All right, so today I just wanted to do a quick video on, on the RetroPie setup script because it seems like there's a bit of confusion with some people. Um, so I'm just going to open it up from the terminal, but if you've built your RetroPie from RetroPie 3.0 and forward, there's a RetroPie menu in the emulation station folder. And um, in the, at the very bottom of that, you can access it through there so you don't need to go to the terminal in the newer builds. Um, and it's just called RetroPie Setup. So um, just from the terminal, if you don't have that, you can do CD RetroPie Setup, and then and don't forget the capitals, and sudo RetroPie Setup. Okay. So it opens up into something like this. This is what it looks like right now. Just ignore the cues and stuff. That's just because I'm on putty. It doesn't usually look like that. Um, so the, I'm just going to go through and explain uh, what these things are. Um, first, usually when you go into the setup script, the first thing you're going to want to do is update the setup script. So that's this one down here. Um, as of right now, if you update it, you're going to have to exit back out and then go back in. But I've changed the source code um, for future builds so that you shouldn't have to exit out anymore. You can just uh, choose this and um, it will just automatically reset the script. So in the future, that will be how it is, but right now you're going to have to exit back out and go back in, um, at least for RetroPy uh, 3, RC1, Release Candidate 1. So um, after you've updated the setup script, then um, you can either choose to install individual emulators or do a full binary install. So if you're trying to update and uninstall everything, um, these are the first two options. So binary-based installation is lot faster and it is recommended just because it's quicker and it usually has the most updated stuff um, and um, so that will update everything on your build and then the source based installation it has everything that's like super most recent um, but it takes about 20 hours to compile on the Pi so it's not really that effective you can usually get everything you need from binary so usually just stick with binary you shouldn't ever really need to do source based installation um, Right, and then so the setup configuration, um, I'm going to go in through this, and this is a lot of more managerial type stuff, um, supplementary manuals, so um, they're all pretty self-explanatory. Um, I'm not going to describe all of them, but it's mostly just to show you where things are. Um, yeah, so these are like drivers for your Xbox 360 or um, for the GPIO pins. Um, RetroArch joypad auto configs. So if um, RetroArch doesn't automatically configure for you at the beginning, you can uh, configure it for here. Um, yeah, so there's not a whole lot in here that you would typically touch, but they're there if you need to. Um, and then the next one is experimental packages. These um, these change sometimes depending on the stability and testing. I'm probably going to um, hopefully get some of these out of here because some of them are pretty stable. So they would uh, put them back into individual emulators. But um, So I'll just show you what's in there right now. This is where you'd install Kodi. Um, we plan 64 plus testing. So that's like an updated version of the N64 emulator. Um, a few others, Dreamcast or Rycast. A um, bunch of Libretro stuff. That's what the LR stands for. That's Libretro. Um, a lot of these aren't stable, but some of them are. And then Kodi, um, if you're into that, that's where that is. Minecraft. Um, and Super Mario World. Just added that one. It's a really good game. Um, and a virtual gamepad. The thing I showed you on the other video, I created a script for it. So now you don't have to go through that whole video. You can just install it from the experimental menu, which is convenient. Um, and we'll eventually probably put that into supplementary instead of um, here. But anyway, so if you don't see them in the experimental menu, um, then they're going to be in the regular um, emulator menu. So that's option five, um, individual emulators and binary source. And again, it's similar to the first two up here. Um, you've got the bunch of emulators here. They're not part of Libretro. And then um, lower down here, you've got the LR, which stands for Libretro. So these are the ones that are part of RetroArch. And we'll uh, use those configurations. These ones usually have to, the ones that aren't part of RetroArch usually have to be configured manually. Um, yeah, and so let's say that if you wanted to install an emulator, um, you can. It'll give you an option to choose binary or source. 
Source usually takes a little longer, um, but it's usually more updated, but um, binary typically should suffice and it's a lot faster. So usually, if in doubt, just stick with binary. It's quicker. But um, if there's like some bugs that are fixed and haven't quite been updated in the binaries, then sometimes the source will, will do that. But typically, binary should just be fine. Um, so some of them don't have binaries. Some of them are just compiled from source, like Super Mario War is currently just from source. Um, and so in that case, then you would just it would just automatically compile for you. You don't really have a choice because um, binary is not there. Um, yeah, so once a lot of the time, if they're taken out of experimental, this is the menu they'll be put into, um, and you know it changes depending on the development of um, of the source code. So uh, we're always adding new things. Um, a couple other things in here that aren't like games, you can update emulation station. That doesn't change all that often, so you shouldn't have to do that. Um, very frequently. And then another thing too is the RetroArch. If you ever need to update RetroArch, this is where that is. Um, and sometimes there are, that, that's in constant development, so sometimes there are changes in um, if you want to update that. That's, this is where you do it. Um, typically there's usually issues with the, ARG, the ARGUI or the um, RetroArch menu. Um, and usually those fixes can be updated through here if you don't want to wait for ne the next release or do a full binary install or whatever. Um, but yeah, other than that, everything else is just emulators. Um, and I think that's basically it. Um, it's pretty self-explanatory, um, but just in case for new people who don't know what the RetroPie setup script is or how to install things from it, that's that should be a pretty good overview for what you um, might hear in the forum, forums or um, just kind of give you an idea of where to start. Um, and then afterwards, typically I just reboot it just in case. Usually you don't need to, but um, usually I will. Just in case there's something that needs to be um, incorporated that maybe I missed. Um, but yeah, that, that should be basically it for the RetroPie setup script. So hopefully that's useful for you to get an idea of what that's for. Um, and if you didn't do a build um, from like a SD image, you can also just install this script on any Linux-based uh, distribution, or at least Debian-based ones, I think. I haven't really tried it because um, I currently only have Windows. Right now I need a dual boot at some point. But um, And hopefully in the future, um, instead of having this uh, script and having everything be pre-built, it would be nice if uh, people would be able to just choose which emulators they want and then have it basically build them their own package um, when they start up RetroPie for the first time because I think it would actually be a lot more space efficient and would give people an option to, to only pick what they want because really I don't think very many people use the Macintosh or some of the stuff that's there by default and it would save you a lot of space as well. Um, to just kind of clean it up for the things you don't want and let you keep the things that you do. So perhaps for RetroPie Release 4, maybe that's what we'll do, I don't know. Um, it's still something to think about, but yeah, hopefully that's helpful. Um, that should be about everything, so enjoy.